Hello everyone. Today we are going to create a burst effect. We can apply it to meshes such as firecrackers, grenades, and so on. Okay. To create this effect, we first need some textures. There are two flipbook textures, which are similar to explosion and fire, and a flare texture. Then materials we use this time are very simple and the steps of making materials are very similar to our previous video. So I put these materials and textures together in the project and you can download them for free on my Patreon. The only part that needs attention is the material of dust or confetti. We did not use flipbooks to make different shapes, but used blend mode mask, so we only need to modify the offset of the noise texture to get different shapes, and also use power to control the shape size. Okay, let's make Niagara. First, we need a mesh as the source of burst, that is, a mesh like firecracker. Here we use a cylinder to simulate firecrackers, and of course, create a simple material for it, so that it looks more like firecracker. First rename its source, change its loop cycle to self and once, then add spawn burst, set spawn count to 100, and set its lifetime to a random value. 0.3 to 0.9. We don't need to set the color, just keep the default color of the mesh. Then set its size, 0.1 to 0.2. The z-axis can be 0.5 to make the cylinder look longer. Then we add a shape location, sphere, set the radius to 30. Then add initial mesh orientation to set the mesh random rotation when it is spawned. Finally add a velocity in cone. Set the angle to 120 degrees. The speed is 500 to 1500. Yes, this is the burst effect. Then in particle update, add update mesh rotation. We can use a random rotation, random vector. Okay, we can also add scale mesh size, if we need we can make the mesh larger or smaller. Then add gravity force to simulate the process of the mesh falling. We can see that when the default gravity is kept, the mesh doesn't fall very obviously. So set the gravity force to a larger value, from negative 2000 to negative 1000. Okay, that's about it. Now we need to add an event triggered when the particle death to spawn some new emitters when these particles death. So first we spawn flare. There will always be some flares when a burst occurs. Replace the material here with the flare material in the project. Create an event handler. Select spawn particle for execution mode. Select the death event in the source emitter for source. Then receive death event. When each particle in the source emitter death, a new flare particle will be spawned at its position. Also set spawn number to 1. Ok we can see these flares. Let's take a look in the level. Yes, these flare particles will be spawned when these meshes death. Now we also change its loop behavior to once, then set the user color. The default setting is close to red, which is more in line with the particle effect during burst. The lifetime is 0.1 to 0.15, because the flare during the burst generally doesn't last too long. Then in the particle update, set scale color, using a curve, such a template curve is fine, and the scale curve can be set to 5 to make the color brighter. Alpha we can copy this curve and the scale curve as default one. Then we add a scale sprite size, using default curve here, and we need make sure that its start value can't be zero. If it is zero, we can't see these particles. Okay, these flares are not very obvious in the preview. It's too small, let's set scale curve to five, which should be okay. 
We can also set the particle rotation to random, which will look better. Next we need another flare to make glow. These parameters don't need to adjust. The main changes are the scale color and scale size. First, we change its size to a larger value, like 20, yes, that's enough, and we lower its color. Just change scale curve to 0.01 in alpha. We only need the glow at the edge. If we think the color is still too strong, we can reduce it again, 0.005. Okay, now let's make the flipbook effect when burst. The burst requires some animation effects of fire or smoke. These steps are similar to the flare emitter. First replace the fireball material. It is an explosion effect. And create an event handler to trigger the event. Oh, we used the wrong material here. It should be here fireball. This is flare. Okay. Since Fireball is a flipbook material, we need to set the sub UV. It has six rows and six columns, so change it to six by six here. Then add sub UV animation in the particle update. Select Sprite Renderer, and the start and end ranges are 0 to 35, because there are 36 textures in the flipbook. Now let's take a look. Yes. We can see the particle animation, but its duration should be faster, 0.1 to 0.2. The color is also the same, using the user color control. The particle size is 50 to 100. OK. Set scale color and scale sprite size in particle update. Set it to 0.5 at the start and 1 at the end. The color scale is controlled by the curve in the template as before, and the scale curve is 5, the alpha is 1. Now let's take a look. Yes, it's a bright burst effect. Of course, we need to set a random rotation. Okay, next, we want to make a glow for this burst effect. So we duplicate this emitter, and use another material, smoke, which has 8 rows and 8 columns, so we change the sub UV to 8x8, eight eight, and in sub UV animation we need to change it back to 63. The parts that need to be modified in this emitter are still the scale color and scale sprite size. Here we change the size to 2. OK, and for its scale color we can adjust the alpha a little lower, 0.05, may be too dark, change it to 0.1 to simulate the glow effect. Yes, then let's create spark effect. For spark, we first replace the material, glow back material, and these settings are the same. Then add an event handler, but this time we are making spark, so spawn number will be a little more like 5. Then in the initialize particle, we set a random lifetime. The lifetime of spark will be longer and the color will be stronger. Next, add velocity, from point, set speed to 1000 to 2000. Oh, by the way, we haven't set the particle size yet, 1 to 2 is enough. In the particle update, add scale color and scale sprite size. For color, we still use the previous template curve, but this time the color will be stronger so set it to 100. Alpha is same. Scale sprite size can use non-uniform curve to set the X and Y axis. First set Y axis, make the start value of the Y axis larger, change it to 5, and set it to zero at the end, so that the curve drops faster, which particles will also quickly disappear. 
The x-axis can be set to 1 at the beginning and 0 at the end. That's it. We also need to add gravity force. In the level, check if the default gravity is enough. O. Oh, and select alignment to velocity. OK. The gravity seems to be insufficient. Let's set it larger, from negative 2000 to negative 1000, so that it will be affected by gravity more strongly. Then add aerodynamic drag. Let's fix these issue. Add initial mesh orientation. The value in the drag is simply adjusted to make the particles create a more random state. And scale sprite size. 1.2 should be enough. Yes. Then we will make a longer spark. Duplicate this emitter and name it Spark Long. Its lifetime will be smaller. Sprite size doesn't need to be adjusted here. In velocity, speed should be faster, 1500 to 3000. Then scale sprite size. We drop the y-axis to 0.1 when the key data is 0.5 and adjust the y-axis scale to 2. OK. Then let the particles be affected by a smaller gravity of negative 1000 to negative 500. The aerodynamic drag doesn't need to be adjusted. Then add curl noise force, 100 to 200, set frequency to 25, pan noise field to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 1. Finally set facing mode to face camera. In the default facing mode, once we set the alignment to velocity, the particles will not all face the camera, which looks strange, so we set the facing mode to face camera. Yes, this is great. Finally, let's create the effect of confetti. Replace the material and follow these steps. Set spawn number to 5. In the initialize particle, set lifetime to 0.8 to 1.5, use the user color, and set sprite size to 5 to 25, with a random rotation. Then add a velocity, set speed to 1000 to 2000 from the point, then in the particle update, we don't need to set its color, just scale sprite size from 1 to 0. Also add rotation and aerodynamic drag, so that the falling of particles will be more natural with physical logic. Let's take a look in the level. Oh, we forgot about gravity. Negative 2000 to negative 1000. Finally, add dynamic material parameters. Here we set two dynamic material parameters. One is offset and the other is power. They control the shape and size. Use random values to make different shapes. Yes, that's it, a simple burst effect. If we need a larger explosion mode, we can use different flipbook materials. Their principles are the same. Okay, so that's all for this video. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.